Hey everyone, welcome back. Welcome back. Uh, in today's tutorial, we are going to add an AI agent to this Dash app using LangGraph. So this builds on top of the last video where we built this Dash app that has a tree map to explore uh, the global trade of arms, right, between countries. So we have suppliers, we have recipients, and we can change the years. Now, with this AI agent that we built, if we click on a supplier, let's say France, uh, it's going to be thinking, you see updating, and it's going to activate the AI agent and spit out three to five countries that um, that are the three to five defense companies that um, build weapons and manufacture weapons. In France, we have Safran, Dassault, and MBDA, and we have a description of each one of them. Let's go back to all, and let's try uh, Russia. So you see it's going to be thinking, it's thinking of three to five, it's searching the web for three to five defense companies, and then it came up with the name and one sentence of the defense companies. And this is on purpose. I told it in the prompt to only come up with one sentence between for three to five companies. So let's see how this is done. We are going to go here to the code. I'm going to share the code on uh, Charming Data. Uh, most of this code uh, is a Dash app that already existed from last video. So don't be scared because you see 100 lines of code. We already went over most of this in, in the last video. What's new in this code is this section right here. We are adding um, an API key all the way from, from uh, actually row 13 to row 36. And then at the very bottom right here, this is new from 120 to 130. So not too many lines of code. Let's go over it. Let's see what we're doing here and how we add this AI agent using LangGraph. So first, first thing we need, I imported a few more libraries here from LangChain and, and um, uh, Chat Open AI. So we're gonna use the Open, uh, open AI API key. Go to these uh, um, sites and you can get your API key. Once you have an API key for uh, searching uh, for OpenAI for your agent and then uh, for your model, sorry, model 4.0, and then Tavili is for searching the web. Now you can move to the tool section. So this is how you create um, your own customized tool in LangChain. We do at tool, we define the tool function. In this case, we're going to give it a query, which is going to be a string. Um, C type string, and we have to add this description. The AI, AI agent uses this description on top to understand which tool to use. Here, there's only one tool, so not too many options, pretty clear which tool to use. But if you have three, four, or five tools, uh, the AI agent will need this description to better understand if they should use this tool or another tool for the user question. Printing out for myself, just so I can see here in the, in the terminal, and then I'm returning the Tavily client, where is the Tavily? Tavily client, search query. So I'm returning the, the search, the result. Then I'm using uh, the model I'm going to use is going to be uh, the uh, GPT-4.0. Uh, we put this function inside a list and um, then we'll call it tools, right? It can be so we can have multiple tools with multiple functions. And here's our system message or what you would often referred to as um, prompt. So we're just saying here to the AI agent that he's that they are an experienced web researcher, expert in arms trade and defense companies. Uh, when the user asks them about main defense companies that make armament in a, in a specific country, you, AI agent, will give three to five companies with one sentence description of that company, which is why you saw this. Three to five companies, one sentence description. I wanted to limit it. Uh, we're also going to add memory, um, which will talk memory and config uh, to remember the conversation and the, who was talking and the thread of that conversation. But we will go over that video. Oh, I'll make that video with memory uh, the next time to show you how to do that. So here we have our create uh, react agent that we imported from uh, above here. Um, this is almost like a built a built out. Um, lane graph agent. So we include our model, we include our tools, our system message, and we're going to include a memory, right? So later in the next video, 
we'll see how to uh, make this agent remember stuff. All of this is the same from the last video. I'm importing my data. I have my radio I have buttons, my radio slider, as you can see here, radio buttons, radio sli the rain slider, sorry. Um, and then I have my graph underneath. And this markdown, this is new. In here, the children of this markdown is where I'm going to where I'm going to put the the result, the output of the agent right here. Okay, so let's see. This this whole callback is from uh, the last video where we create the graph, but this callback 107 uh, is fairly new, right? So we saw this part. We're going to use the click data of the graph. We're going to read or listen to the click data, which we'll call clicked, and um, we're going to dive into the click data. If you just print the click data, you'll see you'll see all the information you get. But if you dive into it, if you dive into the label and the parent, uh, then you can tell what part of the graph was clicked. Was all clicked? Was the parent clicked? Was uh, the child clicked? Was the label clicked? You can tell anything you want. So here we're going to say if the parent of the click data is all, means that you clicked these countries, the top countries, not the inside, not the receivers, but the suppliers, United States or Russia or, or Israel or Germany, the parent above this is all, right? Because we have all and then and then the child is is this top countries and then inside another country and then and then type of armament. So I only want to activate this when the uh, user clicks on the supplier, in this case, Israel or France or Sweden. Me, which means that all right here is actually the parent. So right here, if parent is all, now I know the supplier was clicked. I do something. If not, just don't update. Don't update uh, the callback. Don't do anything. Right. So if I click on here missiles, it doesn't do anything. Right. It's not create. It's not activating the AI agent. If I click on India inside Russia, India has the receiver. The parent is Russia the parent is not all, it's Russia, then it's not going to do anything. It's going to no, not update. Okay, let's click on all. Now, if I do click on uh, Norway or Russia or United States, I'm going to activate this part. And this is where I'm actually invoking or activating the AI agent. I'm saying Landgraf agent executor, which is what we call right here, remember? Landgraf agent executor. I'm going to activate it. It has the model and the tools. I'm going to invoke. And in this case, I am going to tell the AI agent what the user question is, right? In most um, apps, um, you're going to see uh, like, like ChatGPT and everything. You, the user actually asks the questions. There's a text box. The user asks the question, and the AI agent uh, gives the answer. In this case, I always want the same question, the, the question to be the same. So I'm going to be the user. What are the main defense companies that make armament in the whatever this label tree is, which is actually extracting the country that was clicked on in the United States or Russia or France or Sweden and so on and so on. So I'm going to click on, let's say I'm going to click on Sweden. So this will be Sweden. And now it's going to think, updating. And what it's doing right now, you see, it's uh, searching for main companies in Sweden. It's thinking, and now it's giving me those five different companies. And well, it gave me actually, oh, uh, three, four, five this time. It got confused with, uh, oh, here we go. It didn't print out, but here it is. Saab AB, Namno Sweden. Uh, I wouldn't, I'm not going <laughs> to try to pronounce them because <laughs> it's not going to be, it's going to be ugly. Um, and, uh, and so that's it, right? So we invoke the Langraph agent. We also add this config. This config is regarding memory. We'll see this next time. And this is how we extract the response. If you, if you just print the response without this, you'll see that it has many, many different like labels and categories. So to dig into the messages, you'll go response messages, the last message, and dot content. This is how you extract the, the string itself. And then I'm just returning the string, the response, to the children of the markdown. Remember the search area is the ID of the markdown. So I'm just returning it right here. Cool. So really that's what I wanted to show you. Um, in the next video, uh, we're actually going to include memory. So we're going to uh, include a text box 
and the button. Underneath here, I'm going to add a text box, allow the user, user to ask anything they want, and then submit button. When they hit it, when they hit that button, this um, callback, or maybe a new callback, we'll see, will be activated. The agent will be uh, activated as well, and, um, and then it will um, answer the user uh, to the best of its knowledge. And we'll also add memory. So we're going to use the DCC store to continue the conversation. All right, so join me at charmingdata.com, well, charming-data.com, uh, where you can see the code and we can see all past videos and future videos and learn a lot more about AI agents, uh, lane graph, lane chain, and what have you. All right, everybody, I hope you have a good one. Uh, always remember we're better together, so help each other out.